Hello everybody, it's Chloe. Alright, oh, this has been such a nice yet tiring day. Um, it is the day before midsummer, uh, the summer solstice, and um, evidently tomorrow is going to be the longest day of the year, but you know what? Like, it is 8, 18 or something like that, and it is still somewhat light outside. Um, I keep thinking we are at sunset and it just keeps going on and on. So there you go. We're, we're already having some awesome effects of midsummer or summer solstice or mm, litha. So um, my last video was a little bit long and I'm sorry for that. I'm hoping to make this one much shorter. And um, I just want to share a few ideas on Midsummer, and I didn't really get to really talk about how we handle the, um, I guess most pagan calls, call them sabbats, but we call them, you know, the shifting seasons, and which would be, you know, through the different f four seasons of the year. In some areas, it seems more like three. And um, this, our first season here was like late fall, and we've done all through winter and now spring, and we're into the thick of summer now. Um, going into the thick of summer now so we're almost through uh, almost a full cycle of seasons and uh, one of the things we do is that for homeschooling families who are also maybe earth spiritual or for earth spiritual families who are thinking about homeschooling or just looking for things to do um, when your kids are not at school having to do with your um, spirituality uh, I'd like to recommend two different uh, websites uh, out there or two different sources for printables and ideas for uh, sharing the seasonal celebrations with your kids and some of them have one of them has much more than that but um, one of them is uh, originally meant to be a magazine PDF uh, and also a source for networking and ideas for families with children and that is called the Puka Pages uh, uh, it's uh, pukapages.com and I believe it has another title as well um, let me see just a moment here uh, just trying to move the yeah puka pages is what it's called puka pages magazine for pagan kids but the website is called the secret moon garden dot ning dot com uh, you'll want to go and look it up um, I will put a little website for the Puka pages but I'm not sure that that's the first thing you hit or get to uh, but if you do like a search for like um, pagan children Puka magazine or anything like that you'll get to here it'll bring you to this area okay so um, another website that I really, really enjoy and I use it for um, more things. It has printables for copy work for pagan words um, and, and themed stuff, little banner samples to print up yourself. Um, let me show you an example of what I've gotten recently. Oh, these are Puka pages. Pull out one moment. Uh, Okay, here we go. So from littlepaganacorns.com, they are a homeschooling printable source for families um, that has way more than things for just the sabbats. Um, it has some unit studies, it has some crossword puzzles, it's got lots and lots. And a few things that they update each year is like a planning calendar um, for your curriculum and what you're doing yearly. Um, they were doing a little tarot pack for kids at one point. Um, they have crosswords, mazes, um, and so much more. Um, printing work and like I mentioned a few uh, unit studies and lap book type um, printables. So I would really take advantage of them. Here's a couple samples for Litha or Midsummer. Uh, 
you can go to the website please do go it's free that all they ask for is you know donations if you want but otherwise these are free and they now have a printable book of all these that you can order from them but uh, and I don't get nothing for recommending them I've just been using them for a number another year a number of years now and what we do is I encourage my children to color these and then we'll cut them out smaller closer to the drawings and we will pin the uh, tape or pin these up near or, or around our altar that we'll create uh, indoors. Do we use these as kind of like how what you would do in the classroom where you put up the art that the kids are doing during that season or for that project? We do that with these. And so we have some that say Litha, some that say Summer Solstice, one that says Happy Midsummer, and it has some kids playing outdoors. This is all their work, the littlepaganacorns.com. Um, my kids like short little crafts like this, and they even have a few mazes. I have to print one up. One's a sun with a maze in the center of it. Uh, and then but at the Puka pages, it's a PDF magazine. And from it, I go through and pick out the parts like my older boy loves strawberries. So they had a nice little drawing page uh, or coloring page of strawberries. I printed up and he's going to color that in and we're probably going to cut that close uh, all the way around and we may even do a, a little scrapbooking to be able to keep it and have them color that in. But they also had a nice article that talked about um, in the herb garden but this one was um, what is the only fruit that seeds on the outside? And the answer is strawberries, and it tells you much more about strawberries. Strawberries are also associated with the full moon that happens just before or near midsummer. Um, and, or another one is the honeymoon. Um, and then a few other, other moons. And I think the moon after this, I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called. But there's some really cool printables that you can get about that as well. Another one that came off of one of their ones is this cool page of wishing on stars or wishing off of the, you know, the dandelion puffs, which is very popular <laughs> in our family. So I thought I'd also do that because we often do that in the summertime. So we'll read about the strawberry. We'll read, there's far more stuff in the Polka Magazine about Litha and they have a few different editions on PDF that you can pull up and if not print everything, I'll usually read that online because we try to not print everything we're interested in. We only print what we really want to use. Um, so like I said, I still need to print probably the maze, and sometimes I'll print the word pages, um, especially if my kids don't want to do their regular spelling or vocab work. I'll be like, well, I can print out some key terms or words that are associated with our um, sabbat or equinox or whatever, Like, and some of it's like the word lists from uh, the little... Uh, paganacorns.com has things like flowers and litha and midsummer and green and sun and they have it in print and then they have another one you can print up that's in cursive so if you're looking for uh, copy work or tracing work or whatever however you want to think of it you can find some nice um, pieces over at little egg corn or little pig and egg corns uh, again the puka pages I mostly get for like stories um, there's also like info on say seasonal symbolism stuff like the strawberries and other things I don't try to print up everything because we could just read it online on the PDF and then we do the coloring pages and then the other part of what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to um, talk I've already talked with my younger son and probably will have the discussion tomorrow with my older son they get up at different times they're sleepy heads and I we like to just casually talk about topics and I find they remember things really well it's a Charlotte Mason technique where you just kind of talk through and um, what you've been reading about or what isn't going on in a picture or maybe they see a subject that they're interested in and so we share through verbal exchanges instead of 
all kinds of paperwork. I mean, I do some of them. And again, sometimes it's coloring work to do while I'm reading a story or a myth or um, asking what they'd like to do for this uh, sabbat, in this case, the solstice. Um, I don't usually call this holiday Litha. Um, I don't have much connection to that. I can't remember if it's Celtic or Greco-Roman or whatever it is. But to me, it's just the summer solstice or midsummer. Um, but I like to show the kids all the op options and all the days and how different cultures um, recognize the seasonal shifts. And so for the Northern Hemisphere right now, we're experiencing the longest day of the year um, in the Northern Hemisphere. In the Southern Hemisphere, I believe they're going through winter uh, and the shortest day of the, week, of the year. And uh, I will probably talk about that, how the differences between the Northern and Southern Hemisphere. And we are in a new location. So we have been planning to go out and do plant or tree identification based off the leaves and the trees that we have in our backyard. And I'm almost in like a grove here <laughs> around my property. My house is ringed by trees and our backyard is at least a partial ring. Um, there is no ring, it's not a full ring, except for the fact that it totally circles our house. And um, so we wanted to see what trees were around in our grove, as we call ourselves. We're in kind of a house within the grove. Um, and uh, the part of the reason we want to do that is... Uh, to get to know our area, to get to spend some time out in nature in a constructive way. Uh, since my kids kind of find it boring to be outside, they are techie boys who like to game. And so I try to find uh, activities to do so they have some kind of action instead of just, you know, sitting around in the grass, which is lovely and I love doing it. I'll sketch and just sit out in the grass and sketch the bugs and birds and listen to the bird song. But... I'm going to try to find some of that. Um, I've bought, gotten some strawberries to eat because my older boy loves strawberries. We're going to talk about how the sun is, you know, the fuel that helps um, that helps get to us through the plants that create fruit, food with it. And so it, we, although we are celebrating the holiday in a spiritual way, um, we're going to talk about it in a kind of a practical way as well, how it actually works through nature. Uh, so um, a little picnic in the yard with a blanket we're going to I don't tend to like picking flowers <laughs> um, I love seeing them on the stem naturally and what I do is if I see flowers dropping before they've gotten too old or really dried out I like to collect them then and my sons know that I have this habit of like if I'm gonna pick a flower or take a flower before it's time or even any kind of plant I will talk to it <laughs> and I know that's kind of silly but I've do, been doing it since I was much younger in my mid-teens maybe even younger than that but it was part of my pagan um, thought process of how I interact with the plants because to me they are other people um, to me animals are other people plants are other people clouds are another type of people with a different kind of consciousness and they think I'm a little wooey and that's fine because their dad's rather practical and they're rather techy and practical too but they also have learned a bit of respect towards these beings because I show that bit of effort of not stepping on every plant that's around and having certain areas that I try to weave through without with least impact. We have quite a few slugs and other, um, I've seen a lot of bumblebees around the flowers that are blooming in our yard right now. So actually dressing up the yard and, and making an effort to get things to look a bit differently isn't really my goal, um, at least not this year. Uh, perhaps next year I'll do a bit of an altar and some other things. But this year I just want us to really um, get to enjoy and be out in nature. Um, I'll probably do a bit of a video tomorrow, uh, if not in the process of what we're doing, then maybe afterwards. Um, I wanted to sh let you see what the kids actually did with the printables and the color pages. Um, if we did do some kind of flower, I've heard of doing a flower mandala. Again, I'm hesitant just because I'm not the kind that tends to pick flowers. Um, but I had had to sweep up leaves and uh, leaves and 
branches and blossoms that have been falling from some of our bush flowers in the in our yard nearby so maybe I, we can gather some stuff like that since we'll have to identify trees from the leaves I don't know I'm gonna let my boys choose whether we're going to actually pick leaves off the trees or not but that is some stuff we're doing so maybe we'll do a little leaf collage or something um, but yeah I'll I'll sh put up some pictures or maybe show you some examples of that um, tomorrow sometime tomorrow okay so that's all I want to say for right now um, I just want to say a happy midsummer uh, from the night before <laughs> and I hope you all have a lovely day uh, since our dad uh, their dad is working through the day we'll actually probably be having a nice barbecue or um, family meal later in the day as well and we've already talked about including some fruits veggies and mead I have some mead from my lovely friend who enjoys creating mead and brewing and we're going to partake on midsummer <laughs> we have the mead we still have left so I'm really looking forward to it and I thank you for your attention and your time I would love to hear what you do with your children or just yourselves your family your partner whoever by yourself for midsummer uh, and the solstice and if you have any questions about it or more specific things yeah the only other thing I can think of is that uh, I do put out some offerings for the nature spirits, um, either natural things that other animals can also partake of or a stone um, or something else that can biodegrade back to nature without causing harm. So, it, And that's my way of connecting with the fae and the nature spirits of the area. And they will probably also be getting a little bit of libations themselves. So, um, yeah. Again, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful uh, summer solstice. And uh, yes, see ya. Bye-bye.